telepathy has become synonymous with alien encounters, abductions, and visitations. It is quite possible that we ourselves have telepathic abilities hidden in our DNA code and our soul spirits. There's lots to consider here that may help us understand aliens as well as ourselves. Let's explore. Hi everyone and welcome to Project Blue Book, your place for the exploration of the unidentified. I am Thor and thanks for tuning in. It sort of goes against this topic to have images. It's about thought delivered without words or visual cues. Therefore, let's not. Because it's all about mind-to-mind -mind communication between two beings or among a group of beings. We can only imagine how complicated this must be, yet, when we think about it, telepathy must be more efficient and offer a communication much richer in content, because it involves information, thoughts, opinions, and emotions, as well as memories. It is as complicated as the human psyche. Imagine listening in on people's minds monologuing with themselves where nothing remains hidden. You realize telepathy changes everything about how we operate, perhaps leading to a need for a purity of heart and mind that is non-existent in today's human media-driven civilization, because now we can hide our true thoughts and emotions behind facial expressions and words that tell the story we want to tell, not necessarily what we're thinking. Ours is a world where we choose words carefully, where silence can mask who we truly are. Telepathy prevents this. Every nuance of emotion, opinion, and personal feeling is instantly exposed and known. Its consequences would be far-reaching for our culture. Think not just relationships and public discourse. Think crime-solving, trial, and justice. It would instantly simplify because the truth would be just that, truth visible to everyone. It would never be a negotiated outcome of a settlement. The word originates in Greek where tele means remote and patheia means feeling. Remote feeling is what telepathy is. Experiencers of telepathy easily relate to people who have had out-of-body experiences or a near-death experience, where they leave the body to describe communication with spirits in a different realm purely telepathically. I have often pondered the similarities between near-death experiences and abduction experiences, describing telepathic communication with spiritual beings as parallel to the alien encounter experience. It seems they are describing the same thing. Telepathy, in simplest terms, describes receiving thoughts or feelings from another person over distance, without the use of one of the five senses of sight, sound, touch, taste, or smell. Eastern philosophy has embraced telepathy as a factual and existing human trait for a long time, and through yoga and meditation, the world as a whole is beginning to catch up. So how does telepathy manifest through alien encounter and UFO sightings? Rendell Shem Forrest, 1980, is one of the best-known alien encounter cases in the UK. It is the Roswell of Great Britain, where two soldiers, including Jim Penniston, went to the woods outside Woodbridge Air Base to examine lights reported by servicemen standing guard at the entrance to the base. As they came close to the lights in the forest, Penniston walked towards the craft, close enough to touch the landed UFO. He described feeling the presence of high intelligence inside the craft without seeing anyone. Later in the night, and for weeks after, he received binary code downloads into his brain, a bunch of ones and zeros that translate into the following meaningful sentences. Exploration of Humanity 666-8100 continuous 
for planetary advancement. End quote. And then he received coordinates for High Brazil, Ireland, the Pyramids of Giza, the Nazca Lines, the Temple of Apollo in Greece, Zedona, Arizona, and Daishan Q, China. The meaning of the messages, aside from the obvious, that they are there for the exploration of humanity for planetary advancement, with the numbers 666 uncertain and a bit eerie, but many have suggested that 8100 stands for a future year, 6,000 years from now, that they come from the future. The Condon Committee has a detailed report from police patrolman Herb Shermer, who describes detailed communication with extraterrestrials he came in contact with on his patrol, describing they read his mind and downloaded his emotions. He felt it as it was happening. Betty and Barney Hill received telepathic information about the origins of the aliens that abducted them as being from the binary star system Zeta Reticuli, a star map that Betty was able to draw later. She had no prior knowledge of astronomy or Zeta Reticuli. It was, communicate, it was communicated to her telepathically and turns out to be accurate astronomical information. There is a binary system that looks exactly like Betty Drew, 39 light years from Earth. But Hopkins' books, Missing Time, 1981, and Intruders, The Incredible Visitations of Copley Woods, 1987, both describe telepathic communication involving transfers from human to alien entities, expressions of deep emotions, and in turn, alien entity downloads to humans in the form of directives and warnings. Their voices are authoritative, projecting superiority without saying it directly. They deliver a sense of indifferent control over their human subjects, akin to our relationship with livestock. Although, having been raised partly on a farm, I know that not to be entirely true. Farmers care deeply about their livestock. While the memory of such accounts are unique and independent, they do describe the same messages received via downloads, consistent across the world with mind-blowing accuracy. An example of this would be environmental warnings, that we are not good stewards of the planet, that our history goes back way further than we think, that our relationship to off-planet entities is real and in our DNA, that our existence involves overseers curators of our origins, and guardians of our destiny. Whitley Streeper has spoken about telepathy at length in his podcast Dreamland, an unknown country. Let's not forget he's also an experiencer. Stories exist, including 60 school children in Zimbabwe, that all described receiving the same message during a UFO encounter to take care of the planet, and Colonel Ross Dedrickson, of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, who studied UFO encounters during the 50s and 60s, not by choice, but because of his proximity to nuclear energy and testing. He describes multiple encounters by U.S. military men receiving this very same message, as did the children in Zimbabwe, while testing nuclear energy in atom bombs. Take care of the planet. Take care of the planet. Telepathically. What could the implications of this telepathic experience possibly be, broadly speaking? We should contemplate this and its consequences for our state of being. As an example, the ability of others to read our minds means we cannot lie. Imagine a world where hiding truth, lying or changing facts would always be exposed. It's a world where what we think and what we do become necessarily the same. Second, our expression comes from the core of our being, unfiltered. With telepathy, our mind would have to speak in unison with our heart. Internally, this should be cleansing, as it removes the labor of filtering, but it also exposes who we truly are to all that connects to our soul and to ourselves, providing guidance to who we want to be. We follow laws and rules of society for a reason, it is a learned behavior for millennia that we are better off together than alone. We can hunt together better, gather together better, defend together better. 
and protect and survive together better than we could alone. In exchange, we have done away with our worst selfish impulses, like taking others' stuff, negotiating a balance between self-interest and collective interest. It's the same covenant that makes traffic signals work. Now, take this concept to the next level, where hatred, envy, bigotry, discrimination, and other vices that we still get away with by hiding them most of the time. Imagine a world where these vices are visible to all. Possessing them in a diverse culture simply wouldn't work. It would inevitably require us to look inward or risk breaking the covenant of mutual survival and security. It would also probably lead to a gradual evolution towards uniformity of culture, physicality, intellect, and emotions. On the flip side, mutual care and empathy, I imagine, would elevate to a higher level, and laying bare our worries and fears for others to see would perhaps lead to greater mutual understandings and addressing of such concerns. With telepathy, we could be faced with an opportunity or even a requirement to evolve to a place of greater harmony, where the collective would naturally integrate with the self. But back to the aliens. Thinking of their described behavior on Earth through this particular lens may help us understand them better, fear them less, and perhaps realize their uniformity, absence of reaction, and facial expression as nothing to fear, but a result of their own evolution, ingrained in their collective behavior, their culture. At times, they're described as robotic, and it has even been suggested the small greys are biological, robotic, humanoid entities. Perhaps it's cultural conditioning. This is all conjecture, but not without merit. It's supported by eyewitness testimony received by way of telepathic communication. It delivers information and data that continues to grow consistently all across the world. It is gradually painting a picture that ultimately reveals the truth about them, their intentions, as well as our relations, origins, and our place in the universe. What sticks in my mind is their repeated communication that their greatest concern is not us, but the preservation of the planet, this biolab, this earth, we happen to call our home. It may well be that we're not that special or rare after all, but our address, that is what makes us special. You can watch and listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book, your safe and reliable source for exploring the unidentified. Each day, let's practice compassion and kindness. And please subscribe. I'm Thor, and thanks for listening. See you next time.